Psalms 32 was starting with, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night my ha thy hand was heavy on me. Thy moisture is turned into drop of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Now, what I want to share about that is we are blessed when we're obeying God. We know that. We're all blessed. We are blessed when we're trying to stay in the center of his will. When we are using the self-control, the power of self-control God gave us through His Holy Spirit. But there are times when we give in. And when we give in, there are consequences. So a lot of times what God is trying to do is encourage us and let us know how blessed we are. How covered, how protected we are. But then there's the flip side of that. And there are times when we as Christians give ourselves a license that God didn't give us. Sometimes we feed into those attitudes. Sometimes we feed into circumstances. We lean to our own understanding. And we become reactionary. And Jack jumps out the box. And we're flipping upside down, inside out, and backwards. And God's looking at us like, hello, what are you doing? So there are times when we have to be very aware of every given moment. It's not just on Saturday or Sunday, whatever day you go to church, or midweek service. It's throughout the week. It's throughout the day. It's not only your actions, your words, your reactions, your behavior. It's also your thoughts and your attitudes. And a lot of times when we allow ourselves a license to get away with murder, because sometimes there is murder in our heart, but we don't want to acknowledge it, we act on it. And when we act on it, things go wrong. When things go wrong, we think God doesn't love us anymore. But that's not the case. So, this is going to be more of a word of correction. Because a lot of us, we allow certain things and we think, okay, I'm not smoking. I'm not screwing. I'm not doing with those who are doing. I'm not dipping. I'm not shooting. I'm not getting drunk and laying down or doing anything else. So I'm good. But no, most of the sins you'll find start right here in the heart and in the mind. That's where it gets tricky. We don't realize how things that we do, things we say, things we think, things we feel are oftentimes very offensive to God. And we think it's okay because, again, we're under the dispensation of grace. But God said, I'm not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. So that's what we have to be careful of. Now, this is where I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 7. Because Romans chapter 7 sounds like he's got the can't help it. And that's what a lot of us lean on. Well, I got this wrong. That happened to me. My daddy did that. My mama did that. They didn't treat me right. All the things that happened. And then we've got all these reasons why we don't have self-control. All these reasons why we jump off the... I mean, we just blow up. We have all kind of hissy fits and adult temper tantrums and... We make all these crazy choices, all these rash decisions, and everybody needs to understand, I'm damaged goods. 
God understands it more than anybody. But being damaged is not an excuse. Being damaged is not a license. Now, he goes on in Romans chapter 7. Starting at verse 9. For I was alive without the Lord once. But when the commandment came, sin arrived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin. Working death in me by the which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, and I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I allow not, excuse me, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If I then do that which is which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now, he's going on, and I'm going to keep it short. He's going on to talk about the, the, the problem of wanting to do good. Good is in your heart, but sin is right there in your flesh. It's constant pulling at you. It's pulling at you. Somebody gives you a foul look. Somebody acts nasty towards you in the store. And you're like, hey, you're not going to treat me like that. I'm going to tell you all. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. So you want to give them a piece of your mind, but ah, you got to put on the brakes. Who do you represent? You? This mess called flesh? Or God? There are a lot of times when you must be disrespected. And walk on by. You cannot sit up and start a confrontation every time somebody gets on your last nerve. You can't do it. You don't have that right. You're bought with a price. So you have to use the self-control that was given you by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not there for you to just speak in tongues, shout, and jump up and down and turn three times. The Holy Ghost is there to not only help you control yourself, the Holy Ghost is there to help you see yourself, to help you acknowledge the truth about where you are and where you're not. And a lot of times we as Christians, we've been in church so long, we think we're there. We park our car, we polish it up, it looks nice and waxed, but we haven't put any oil in that engine. And we don't realize that we're killing the engine because we're not keeping the anointing. But we want to drive that pretty car. It's shining. We want to show off and let everybody know how blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I am, I am uh, blessed and highly favored of God. We have all these cliches. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Blah, blah, blah. Somebody get on your last nerve. You MF, blah, blah, blah. You just do this. Yeah, I'll I do this to you. Don't think I'm, uh, I ain't no flocking now. Don't push me. What are you trying to prove? What is that coming from? See, one of the problems we don't realize is God is trying to show you what, like he did in the wilderness. He said, I wanted to see what was in your heart whether you would obey me or not. And a lot of times he allows life to happen to show you. He already knows what's in your heart. He wants you to see what's in your heart, to see what your reaction's going to be. He's not doing it to make you look like a fool. He's doing it to let you know, I want to work on that. That's bitterness right there. That right there, that's rage what I see in your heart. That's something that needs to be healed, and I'm the only one who can do it. That's what God is saying to you. So walking with God is not just a get-out-of-hell-free card. 
It's not just you sit up in church with your Bible, your cross hanging around your neck like a rabbit's foot, a good luck charm. Hoping God will give you some good charms for the week. Some good uh, benefits for the week. Yeah. Yeah, forget not all his benefits, but don't forget who God is. Don't forget to fear God. That's where we fall short. We don't fear him like we should. We don't respect and honor him. We don't take him seriously. Because we get away with stuff for so long. And we start to get complacent. We start to kick it and relax. And we feel like, hey, I got this. God's got me. He knows my heart. He understands. I'm stressed. He understands. They got on my last nerve. He understands. I can't pay my bills. He understands. The man did me wrong. He understands. The woman took my money. I mean, yeah, God understands it. But number one, how did you get in that position in the first place? Did God lead you into a mess? You know the answer to that. So then you find yourself jumping off and getting all upset, getting all ticked off, feeling so abused and abandoned by God. But no, God didn't do that to you. The choices we make can make life so much harder on us. And then we get the fat attitude when God's not jumping to our rescue. But all the time we were heading down in that runaway train, God was saying, don't get on that train. Don't get on that train now because it's not going to be good for you. But they smell good, they look good, they talk good. Oh yeah, it feels good. And then when everything blows up in your face, help me, Lord. God said, I was helping you, but you ignored me. That's what Hebrews means. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3, starting at verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation and the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my way. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Why are you so full of torment? Why are you so strung out? Why are you so high strung? Why are you so easily tipped over? Because you have not entered into the rest of God. How do you experience the rest of God? Through obedience. That's how. Somebody cusses you out. You ain't going to have everybody looking at you like you're a flunky, like you're a fool. So you're going to tell them off and give them ten pieces of your mind. No. Walk away. Walk away. Self-control. Everything in you is screaming to retaliate. So what are you going to do with that? That's what you have to think about. You have to think about the fact that, number one, you were bought with a price. You're not your own. Number two, before you represent yourself, baby, you represent God. That's what you have to remember. And you have to understand that God is not trying to do a spoil. He's not trying to be a killjoy. He's not trying to be a mean tyrant. He's doing this for your good. Anytime you lean to your own understanding, anytime you depend on your flesh, your own understanding, your own feelings, your own attitudes, what ends up happening? A mess. Do you know when God says he has not dealt with us after our sins, how many of us have not gotten AIDS? How many of us have not died at the hands of someone else? How many of us have not gone to jail? How many of us have not gotten strung out? Have not ended up on the streets? living in a cardboard box. How many of us 
Why? Because no matter how bad it gets, it could always be ten times worse, y'all. But it's God's love and mercy. And yes, he will allow us to experience some things the hard way. That's part of the process. But he's not going to leave us there. But if you walk away from God and get offended in him because you don't like the way he's dealing with you, you're asking for more trouble. You're putting yourself in dangerous way. Don't harden your heart. Psalms 32 goes on to talk about don't be stubborn like the mule. See, it's that stubbornness. We don't realize it's stubbornness. It's rebellion that causes us to end up having, what does the Bible say? Pride cometh before fall. And a haughty heart before destruction. Right. See, when we get all hung up in ourselves and we think that we are, we're above this, we're above that, we're above him, we're above her. God will bring you down. I'm telling you, you got to be careful about your attitude. You got to be careful. As long as you're humble and you're honest. God will work with you, and he will work with you, and work with you. Why? He's long-suffering, and he's merciful. But I don't know if you ever hear parents say, you know, don't get on my last nerve. I, t I brought you in the world. I'll take you out. When God says, my spirit will not always strive with you, that's a dangerous place to be. You do not want to be on God's bad side. Never. So I plead with you. Those of you who are living for the Lord. You've got blessings. You've got divine protection. You've got peace on top of peace on top of peace. Why? You've entered into his rest. You can't enter into God's rest. Living a double life. You can't be a devil agent and have peace resting, ruling, and abiding in your heart. You can't. You're always going to be in torment, in turmoil. You're always going to be torn between two opinions, God's and yours. Don't blame it on the devil. The choice is not the devil's. The choice is yours. So I ask you, when you know you're going through changes and you know that your decisions are not according to God's will, you know it. And you may not want anybody else to know it, but you know it. Ask God to heal what makes you lean toward the wrong choices. Ask God to heal and remove whatever that is that makes you see things a certain way. You just can't see the positive. It's all negative. It's, whoa, is me. I'm just getting the royal, the, 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 the ratty under the stick. You got to ask God to help you with that. Change your perspective. Help you to draw close to him, even if you feel like you're angry with him. It's okay. We get angry with our parents. But talk to him about it. And ask him to show you what's going on in you that God wants to deal with. As long as you stay in God's face, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him. Listen, as long as you seek God, he will help you. As long as you ask him for healing, for strength, for all kind of help, he will help you. He's a very present help in times of need. But if you look into your dope dealer, you look into your neighbor down the street, you look into him or to her for your help, God's going to say, oh, okay, well, let me back up and give you some room. So you can make your own decisions. That's when you're not in a good place. Anyway, I pray for you that God will bless you. That God will open your eyes to see. Why do you keep finding yourself in these quandaries? 
Why it doesn't seem like you're a dog chasing your tail, getting nowhere fast? Why do you keep going around in circles and circles and circles and you can't seem to make any kind of advancement, any kind of progress? Why? Only God can answer that for you. And if you're honest, when he answers, you will acknowledge it. You won't deny it. Don't go into denial because if God says it, baby, it's true. Amen? That's where you get your help. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Be blessed. Don't be stressed. And don't keep giving in to your flesh. In Jesus' name.